Today, I want to talk about a very important concept called triangle congruency postulate. Triangle congruency postulate. And I'm going to break this down word by word. And I'm going to give you examples of it and explain and try to give you some intuition on why we accept this congruency postulate there should be s there's many of them to be true and triangle of course is a polygon with three sides and triangle arguably is the founding stone of geometry all geometry can be to some extent derived from a very basic polygon called triangle so we can have some triangle and congruency means they are the same congruency means they are the same same shape. So this triangle is congruent to, congruent to is, looks like this, that's how you write it, with a squiggly sign and equal sign underneath. So this means congruent to. So this triangle can be congruent to this triangle, or congruent to, uh, you can rotate this around even. Uh, I'm not sure how well I can I can draw it, rotate it around. So this triangle. So something for something to be congruent to something else, it has to have the same shape, same shape, same shape, and the same size. So this triangle and this triangle are not congruent. These are not congruent, and you can denote it by crossing the congruency sign with a bar like I did right here. So the, in this case, it's not congruent to. So having the same shape is not enough. It also has to have the same size. But you can, once it has the same shape and size, you can rotate, or, rotate it around as I did with these two triangles. So that's what congruency is. And postulate means it is, this thing is different from theorem. Postulate, postulate and theorem are not the same thing. Theorem. Theorem is something you can prove from the things, from the postulates and other theorems that come before. Theorems are the, uh, what you get when, whenever you have, let's say you start with this postulate or some theorem that you know to be true, and you're using this and maybe another, another theorem that you know to be true to prove, to have, to construct another theorem. Uh, right above it. So theorem is like a building. You have some evidence, evidence or things that you know before. So these are the truths that you know before. And using these, you can use logical argument. So logical argument is the worker that's constructing this building. So you can use logical argument to build up this building and prove the theorem. So theorem is something you prove from the things that you already know to be true. And postulate is, you cannot prove postulate. You're not going to prove it. You're not proving postulate, but you are going to accept it as true because it is just, it just makes so much common sense. It is just so logical. And if you just look at it, it just cannot be false. So postulate, you, you're not going to prove it, but you're going to say, well, this makes so much more, so much sense. I can just look at it. It makes common sense that it has to be true. So we are going to say it is. And there are a few triangle congruency postulate that you have to know or as you get along with geometry, go farther along, and you wish to prove more complicated geometric theorems, you have to know SSS, SAS, AAS, and ASA. These are the co triangle congruency postulate. You can argue that AAS can be proven from ASA, and you're right. But for the sake, for the sake of simplicity in this video, I'm going to treat these four as separate, and I am going to mention the connection between AAS and ASA. So what do I mean by this? Well, S means side, and A means angle. And I'm first going to examine SSS, or side, 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 congruency postulate. And this thing tells us that if two triangles have the same size, another same side and another same side, that is, all three sides are congruent, then they have to be, the triangles itself, triangles themselves have to be congruent. 
So SSS triangle congruency postulate is telling us that there is only one possible triangle that can be generated using these three sides. So we cannot make two different triangles, two non-congruent triangles using these three sides. And I'm going to try to rotate this around, translate it, move it back and forth. And we're going to see how many triangles we seem to be able to make using these sides without stretching or squishing them. To begin with, let's try to make one triangle, rotating this, translating it, moving it back and forth, moving it, keep on doing it. This is pretty tough. Eventually, we're going to get it. Yes, this seems like it. So we have one triangle we made. Now let's see if we can make another triangle that looks different from this, that's not congruent to this, that we can make using these three sides. So I'm going to try to be creative to, to switch the order of the vertices. But it turns out this triangle looks exactly the same. It has the same shape and size. It is congruent to the triangle we just had. That is SSS postulate. Three congruent sides means congruent triangles. SAS postulate is telling you if there's one side that's congruent, there's another side that's congruent, and the angle in between them. See how A is in between two S's. So if the angle between the sides are congruent, then the triangles themselves are congruent. So that's SAS. And ASA, A. A, let's start with ASA before we get to AAS. ASA is telling you if one side is congruent and the angle that's surrounding the side, that's squishing the side in between, so this angle and this angle are congruent, then the triangles themselves are congruent. So that's ASA. AAS is telling you if two angles are congruent, so let's say this one and this one, so this one and this one, so these two are the same, these two are the same, and the one side that's not in between, see how S is not in between two A's, the one side that's not in, not in between two angles are congruent, then the entire triangles are congruent. And this makes sense, because if these two, if these two angles are congruent, the third angle, which has to be 180 minus the sum of the two angles, has to be congruent, because all three of them has to add up to 180. If two of them are the same, if these two are the same and these two are the same, then the last one, which has to add up to 180 with the other two that have the same measure, has to also have the same measure. So AAS is basically ASA, because if two angles are the same, then the third angle has to be the same also. So AAS is applying ASA with one more step. And that's it. This is the summary of triangle congruency postulate. And you may say, why is this useful? Why is this useful? And the reason is that corresponding parts, let me write this down, corresponding parts of the congruent triangles, so corresponding parts of the congruent triangles are congruent. And you may say, what am I talking about? Congruent triangles are congruent. So let me show you. Let's say you have these two triangles. Let's go down a bit. And let's say you know, you know this side, this side is same as this side. This side is same as this side. And the angle between the sides, so this angle and this angle are congruent. And you wish to show that this side, let's call it X and this side, let's call it Y. So you wish to prove that x is equal to y. And the thing is, you can use triangle congruency postulate. This is SAS, two sides with angle in between, because two corresponding sides and corresponding angle in between them are congruent by SAS, triangle postulate. You know the triangles have to be congruent, and that's telling you the corresponding part, this x and y, has to also be the same. So this is one very quick very simple example of how you can use triangle congruency postulate to prove something about the triangles. And it turns out triangle congruency postulates can be used to prove a myriad of different theorems in Euclidean geometry about polygons, triangles, circles, and many, many, many other things. So triangle congruency postulates are must know. And you may ask as 
many many people and you should ask how come AAA and SSA do not satisfy the congruence congruency postulate and it turns out they do not meet the requirements they just because you have AAA and SSA does not mean you have congruent triangles so let me show you an example of that for AAA think about this triangle and this triangle they have the same angles this angle this angle this angle and these two angles but they are not congruent they have different sides let me make them more conspicuous so it can be a triangle that looks like this like this and with the same angles but obviously these two triangles are not the same because they have different sizes so AAA is not going to work out for SSA the reason is more subtle it's harder to see and let me try to draw it out so you can have a triangle that looks like this so these two no, no, no. Let's say this one, this side, this side, and you want to look at this angle. You, the thing is, you can rotate this side. You can rotate this side inward to have a triangle that looks like this. So, like this. So you can have one triangle that looks the entire triangle. That's one triangle with SSA and another triangle with the same SSA inside. So you can have two different triangles with SSA in some of the cases. But it turns out, but it turns out SSA sometimes works out and that's the hypotenuse leg congruency postulate. So let me write that. Let me add that in. HL hypotenuse, hypotenuse, hypotenuse leg congruency postulate and this is when you have a hypotenuse and a leg that are congruent so hypotenuse and leg is telling you that you have a right triangle so this is the case for the right triangle so let's say you have another hypotenuse and leg that's congruent in this case you cannot really rotate rotate this side inward like this because how are you going to rotate it flipping it over to the other side still gets you the same thing so you cannot really rotate this this side as you can with an with an acute angle residing right over here it's not going to work the same way so hypotenuse leg for the right triangle or ssa for the right triangle works out and we are done these are five congruency postulates you must know sss sas aas asa and hl and aaa does not work ssa do, does not work either but for right triangles hl works out